In the deepest reaches of a hidden valley in Mongolia lies the monastery of Amarbayaskalant, long forgotten by the world. Protected by an extensive range of mountains and difficult passes, shrouded from scrutiny by its remoteness, Amarbayaskalant escaped the destruction that was the fate of countless other monasteries in the 1930s. With the ruthless Stalinist suppression of Buddhism, countless religious texts, works of art and objects of worship were destroyed or hidden. Religious rituals, particularly those performed for the public, were banned. In the 70 years that followed, the hidden objects and the rites of the Mongolian Buddhist tradition were almost entirely forgotten. In September of 2002, for the first time since 1937, the monks of Amarbayas Galant are performing the ritual sum again. The reconstruction of the sam dances is part of a religious renaissance that has been taking place in Mongolia since the popular uprising in 1990 that brought democracy to Mongolia. The sam is an ancient form of mystic dance using masks which has its origin in Tantric Buddhism. There are precise explanations in the great Tantric treatises, such as the Kalachakra, on the forms and meanings of the dances. When Buddhism was first introduced into Tibet, it encountered resistance from the nobles and the Bon priests. Through the introduction of Tantric Buddhism, the teachers of the new philosophy were able to transform the religious faith of the people. The worship of ancestors as gods and spirits of nature was replaced by the rituals and meditations of the Buddhist tantric deities accompanied by deep spiritual and metaphysical symbolism. The Tsum transforms the location where it is played out into a mystic charnel ground where the ignorance that is the root of rebirth is extinguished. It confers increased spiritual wisdom and blessings on the spectators by imprinting them with spiritual knowledge considered either too complex or too profound to be taught directly to common people. In other words, it's a form of Buddhist teaching through visual experience and iconography. Protector deities from the Tibetan tradition are represented by masked characters who in this form make an indirect appearance before the living. Although the Sam dances were only introduced into Mongolia in the 18th century, the tradition of Sam in Mongolia was particularly strong. During its brief lifespan in Mongolia, the Sam attained a level that was never equaled in any other country. Some masks of Mongolian production, for example, are exceptionally large and have an artistic expressiveness only rarely matched in other countries. Amarbayas Galant was constructed by order of the Manchu king Eng Amgalan. Special envoys were sent to the furthest reaches of the empire to find the best location for a monastery in honor of the 80th anniversary of the death of Zanabazar, a revered Lam who produced Mongolia's greatest works of Buddhist art. For more than six years, the envoys searched for the ideal spot for the temple. In places of great spiritual power, they placed coins as markers. The coins of the Manchu period were perforated through the middle with a square hole. Legend has it that three years after the location of present-day Amarbayas Galant was marked, the inspecting envoy for the search came upon exactly the same spot and decided that it was the best place for the new temple. Driving a needle into the earth to mark the location, he discovered that it pierced the hole in the coin left by his predecessors. The monastery was constructed over a nine-year period between 1727 and 1736. The prayer wheels send the prayers inscribed upon them into the winds as they are spun. Flags printed with prayers or mantras and fluttering in the wind serve the same purpose.
The Sam is an important event in the life of the monastery, and the monks have spent six months preparing for the event. The significance of the Sam lies not only in the spiritual development it will confer on monks, but also in the benefits it confers on the people who come to witness it. Today, 40 monks live and study at the monastery. The eldest, Guru Deva Rinpoche, is now in his mid-90s. The youngest Lam is nine years old, and the average age is between 16 and 17, reflecting the relatively recent resurgence of novices entering monastic orders. The Dharma wheel symbolizes the unity of all things. Its eight hubs represent the eightfold path, leading to perfection of thought and action. Because it was in a deer park that Buddha gave his first teachings, the wheel is usually flanked by two deer, Sakyamuni's first audience. At the front of the monastery, a screen wall proclaims the Manchu king's order. All, including those with the rank of chieftain who pass here, must dismount his horse and pay respect to the monastery. There were only six monasteries accorded this privilege in Mongolia. When the troops of the Manchu army arrived at Amarbaya's Galant, they read the king's order and departed without entering the monastery grounds. After the 1930s, only a few wooden buildings housing monks from other provinces, astrologers and schools were dismantled. The monastery remained largely intact and only the roofs and paintings of the temple and various buildings have been restored. Some original wall paintings remain intact. Six months prior to the event, preparations began at the monastery to stage the first sum since 1937. Guru Deva Rinpoche led the initiative to revive the sum with the assistance of Tibetan and Mongolian monks who helped to recreate the ritual. The ritual objects and movements of the Sam have been reconstructed by two elderly Mongolian masters from Gandan Monastery, who participated in the last Sams as young monks and who survived persecution. Two Tibetan monks in exile, Geshe Tupten and the Oracle of Dorje Shukten, have traveled here. They will assist the monks with spiritual preparation for the Sam and with the rituals that lead up to the public performance. Urundan San Lam, image maker, sculptor and master of Kalachakra, has led the preparation of the elaborate masks, costumes and props for the Sam. Sareta Lam, formerly master of the Sam dance of Ikhuri in Urga, has taught the monks the choreography and movements of the Sam. Here a monk prepares the saw a pyramid of red triangles of dough made of barley, flour and butter and crowned by a skull. It's an offering for Damjin Choijol Erlek Khan, the god of death. The saw absorbs all bad and evil during the sum and will be burned in a ritual purification at the end. In ancient times, at the beginning of the ceremony, a doll made of dough in human form, the linka, symbol of ego, was placed next to the Zor. The festival was concluded by a monk wearing a stag mask who tore apart the linka with his sword in a symbolic cutting apart of ego. Another monk prepares offerings, cups of water, barley or millet. According to ritual, they should be countless in number. The dancers of the Sam rituals, with their costumes and masks, represent not only the friendly and the feared deities of the Lamaistic pantheon, but a host of other characters. In the 18th century, two kinds of Sam were prevalent. The first, the Milbogd, died out, but the fancy dress Sam endured. The Sam of Elig Nomon Khan was the most popular in Mongolia, and it's a performance of this Sam that the lambs of Amar Bayas Galant will recreate. This psalm centers around the god of death, Damdin Jojo. As the judge of the dead and the lord of hells in Buddhist myth, 
He's the central protector deity in Gelug tradition. Over the three days preceding the Sam, the Lams perform pujes, reciting the sutras of Damdin Choijo. The Lams who will play specific roles in the Sam are also taught magic incantations by the master Lam, which must be kept secret. Not every Lam can participate or play a particular role in the Sam, because each of the Lams representing a Sam character must be spiritually and mentally prepared in the use of invocations in order to summon the spirit of his character. The Lams believe that if anyone learns the powerful incantations outside of those who have been specially prepared, it could lead to disaster. The oracle of Dorje Shundan enters into a trance. He will foresee the spiritual events of the Sam and communicate with the spirits of powerful deities. As he enters the trance, the monks make offerings to him and the deities that he may embody. The oracle announces the deity that enters him during his revelations and who will preside over the sun. This day it is Hachimabu, the principal attendant of Dodge Shundan. In the evening preceding the public performance, a temple sum is performed by the master sum character, the Blue Shanag. The only character to perform the temple sum, the Blue Shanag calls Elek Khan and lures him with fearful offerings, including a representation of a human skull cap. He gives power to the puja prayers offered to Damjan Choijal, and through meditation and dance, he will embody his spirit in the course of the puja. Eleven black-hatted Shanags are featured in the Sam. The Master Sam is the most powerful of these performers of tantric incantations. Legend has it that in Tibet there was a king called Landrum who wished to eradicate the teachings of Buddha. A powerful master of incantations named Thalong Balkdorj, out of compassion, dressed himself in a long-sleeved coat and black hat and performed a dance to attract the attention of the king. Using this ruse to get within distance of Landrum, he drew a bow and arrow from his sleeves and slew the king. The cup held by the Shanak is a sergium offering or golden drink. It's offered to the Guru, the Lams, the Yadam and to the Dagini or Empresses of the Sam. It's also offered to Damjan Chojal and other protector deities. On the second night of the sum, the monks play the tunchin, or the great horn, and the bishkur, a kind of flute, to proclaim the sum to the sky and earth and to all living beings. Amarbhaya's Galant, a powerful center of Buddhist faith, 
is a pilgrimage site for many Mongolians. It also receives regular visits from a small community of expatriates who are attracted by the beauty of the valley and the peacefulness of the Lamassery. As yet, few foreign travelers have discovered Amarbayas Galant, but those who arrive here are delighted by the welcome they receive. The Sam begins with a performance by two Sidipati, figures wearing skull masks and skeleton costumes. The two characters represent the lords of the charnel grounds, and through their dance rituals and the mantras they repeat, the pavilion and objects enshrined in it are transformed into a mystic charnel ground where the desire that is the root of rebirth is extinguished and where higher knowledge can be obtained. A host of others, including the white old man, a sometimes buffoon-like character who represents fertility, and Hashin Khan and his eight sons, who represent a sort of reception committee for the other dancers, are members of the standard Sam repertoire. Mongolian masks symbolizing the actual presence of a deity never have their eyes pierced. The performers look through the mouths of the masks, adding height to the performer. As the temporary residents of gods and demons, masks are like statues and are treated as sacred objects. When not in use, they're stored in monasteries and paid homage to in daily rituals. The final character to appear in the Sam Square is Damjan Choijal, god of the realm of death and supreme judge of the dead, whom the Mongols call Erlik Khan. Though the god of death, he's in fact a fierce defender of the living and protector of the Dharma. He usually wears a buffalo mask, with a lasso for catching souls in one hand and a skeleton-shaped scepter in the other. His arrival at the head of the procession constitutes the climax of the ritual. In spite of the fact that the Mongolian Sam dance was based on Indian folk art and was popularized in Tibet, it was highly developed in Mongolia. For this reason, the Mongolian Tibetan Sam dance the Gezer and Noman Khan fancy dress sum and Milbogt talking sum will preserve their position in the history of world theatre arts.